Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the Selby series. Selby is one of 11 subdivisions of the county of North Yorkshire. It's made up of 74 civil parishes, a lot of which are very small. Which one are we in this week? Welcome back to a rainy district of Selby. I'm hoping it doesn't rain too much today because this is a very long walk. This has to be one of Selby's most complete parishes. It's got virtually everything you can think of. And uh, it's unsurprising then, it will take me about two hours to walk around it. But I've got all morning to do it, so uh, it should be no problem. Although the only problem I can foresee is if the heavens open. Welcome to Sherburn in Elmit. This Selby episode is sponsored by Past Days, a family history blog by June Terrington. You'll find a link in the description. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Sherburn in Elmit is the last of the three places in this part of Yorkshire which explicitly use the in Elmit suffix. It was, as with the others, once associated with the post-Roman Kingdom of Elmit. Sherburn is located on a ridge of Permian limestone which is above an alluvial plain in the Ouse Valley. The Roman road connecting Castleford with Tadcaster and York once ran along this ridge. The name Sherburn derives from the Old English skur, meaning bright or pure, and burn, which means stream or spring. The name refers to the clarity of the local streams on which it stands. Sherburn is associated with King Athelstan, who in 927 became the first King of England. In 937, he gave the manor of Sherburn to the Archbishop of York. Athelstan is referenced in the name of one of the local schools, Athelstan Primary, and often erroneously at a site close to All Saints Church. I'll explain that when we get there. Until the early 20th century, the village was almost self-supporting, not only with grocers, bakers and butchers, but with all kinds of trades like blacksmiths and wheelwrights. The village is famed for a type of aircraft which was crucial in World War II, and it also once had a massive mansion which was lived in by a man heavily associated with the South Yorkshire coal mines. Speaking of coal, it was mined here too briefly. Let's have a wander, shall we? We begin on Moor Lane, which runs alongside a familiar stretch of water. What you're looking at there is the Bishop's Dyke, the very same which we met back in Kaywood. Moor Lane has an interesting history all by itself. At one time, this was one of the main routes into Sherburn until the A162 bypass around the village was built, which split the road in half. Sherburn is a village which is ever-growing. There have been countless new builds here in recent decades. The Pastures Estate is one example. There are still new houses being built elsewhere. Off Moor Lane we have a section of streets which all refer to the same thing. I guess the clue is in the name. This must have been the site of, or close to, Sherburn's Pinfold at one time. So we've seen already the variation in the housing styles here. There's some areas of new builds, there's some areas of very old builds, and some, there are some in between which we haven't come across yet. Although we're about to, we're about to turn up Moor Road in a moment, which will take us up towards Sherburn's Football Club, 
and uh, the style of housing on that estate there is something we've seen before a few times just a few times A lot of the housing in this part of Sherburn is almost like that classic model village mining style we've come to recognise in South and West Yorkshire. It's not quite the same story though here. Coal was mined here, stick around and I'll show you where, but much later than when most collieries were operational in the late 1800s and early 1900s. At the top of this estate we've got Harold Mills House, one of 10 local community centres all of them are owned by Selby District Council. Also on North Crescent is a nursery and Hungate Primary School, named after Robert Hungate, a local landowner who died in 1619. This is not the first school in Sherburn to bear his name. This area is also the base for Sherburn's emergency services because we've also got an ambulance station here and around the corner in a few moments we'll see the police station it's just uh, to the left up there. That's the ambulance station right there. This is Finkel Hill and in a moment we'll be going south. First we look north where we find the home ground of Sherburn White Rose Football Club. Sherburn White Rose have a senior team and lots of junior sides ranging from the under sixes through to the under 17s. They also have two ladies teams and an over 35 side as well. For the 2022-23 season, the senior side lines up with 12 other teams in Division 2 of the West Yorkshire Association League. That's level 13 of the English Football League system. Back the other way then now, and that's the police station over the road. I'm pretty sure you didn't need me to tell you that. The police cars kind of give it away. As we start to approach Sherburn central area, we start to see a few amenities. Notably, we have Homefield Vets, who have two branches, one in Sherburn and the other in Brayton. That's twice I've been beeped at now this morning. People must be recognising me. I suppose when you've nearly finished the district, you know, you're going to be known to a lot of people, aren't you? It's just how it goes, I suppose. Anyway, we're coming down into the town centre. We pass on the way a care home. This is Hilltop Manor. Buses, and this stop is for decoration at the moment. Whilst non stop on Finkel Hill now, according to Google, Sherburn is still connected to Selby, Leeds, Nottingley, Pontefract, and Tadcaster. Next, we pass a co op. Sherburn's first Methodist chapel once stood where the co op's car park is now. Two more chapels have since been built. We'll get to those later. I've split the centre of Sherburn into two parts. This northern part is smaller, but it gives you a flavour of what's to come. It's good to see a few independent traders amongst the chain stores here. There's a library and a children's centre off to the left. Sherburn also boasts a medical centre too, which is located within the old Hungate School, close to the crossroads we're coming to. At that crossroads we find the Swan and the Red Bear. The Red Bear is a former coaching inn and the place where the London to Edinburgh mail coaches changed horses. Okay, the rain's starting to fall now, quite heavy, so hopefully I can hot foot it around the rest of this route. I've still got a long way to go. We're now on Kirkgate. Kirk, of course, being an old word for church, so the next landmark is the church. This is a former school for girls and infants built in 1876. It's a very unusual design for a school built at that time, and it may be by the Liverpool architect Peter Ellis. It's now a community centre. Something else that's changed its use is the former Forester's Arms. This became offices back in 2018, and the lead space firm Apps Anywhere occupy the building now. I have no idea what this house is or perhaps was, but the reason I captured it is because it's leaning outwards at its far end. It's what I'm calling fabulously misshapen. Talk about character. Here's a fun story. This corner got its name thanks to the Tour de Yorkshire in 2016. At this spot, people gathered with cowbells to cheer on the races. It's been known as Cowbell Corner ever since. Okay, so straight opposite Cowbell Corner, you've got a garage, which I've just kind of walked past. It's uh, Copeland's Auto Repair Services and uh, the church is just up here. I've been uh, 
steadily ambling towards it for the past uh, few minutes. It's just disappeared behind these trees though, but the entrance is just there. Let's go in and have a look. On the edge of the churchyard, we've got the War Memorial. This has some 45 names on it in total, 31 from World War I and 14 from World War II. We will remember them. All Saints Church is a Grade 1 listed building and it contains features dating from the year 1120. It was built on the site of an earlier Anglo-Saxon church. Adjoining the church is an earthwork named Hall Garth. This is sometimes referred to as Athelstan's Palace, but it cannot be dated back with any certainty to the Kingdom of Elmit. When the Battle of Towton was fought nearby in 1461, local legend tells that King Edward used the church tower as a point for surveying the battle lines. However, this cannot be true. The Towton battlefield is between three and four miles away, so it could not have been seen with any clarity from the church tower because records show back then it wasn't as tall as it is today. So I wasn't actually going to come in this one, but uh, the um, vicar, I assume, <laughs> was uh, at the door as I was taking that last shot of the tower and invited me in. So, you know, it'd be rude to say no, wouldn't it? Um, it's quite a nice place, this. It's a nice stained glass. Let's have a look across here. This one's of particular interest to me for some reason. I like that. Seems very old, this one. Beautiful. Now we're at Sherburn High School, a large school, it has around 760 pupils on roll. The school was awarded Specialist Science College status in 2005 and it became an academy in 2019. This stands in front of a street called Eversley Mount, the first nod so far to the name Eversley, and it won't be the last. It's a reference to Eversley Garth, a 19th century mansion which no longer stands. Right, this area of Sherburn is a little bit of a maze. It's mainly residential, uh, but there are some footpaths between the streets, so you know, you can avoid walking down the streets if you really want to. I need to take one of these footpaths until I reach a right turn, which will take me onto a street called Beechwood Grove, I think it is. And down there is where we'll find the Lady Popplewell Centre. Ernest Popplewell was an MP who began his working life as a railway porter. His wife, Lavinia, was a parish and district councillor, and this community hall is named after her. Another footpath connects us to Low Street. This is a former turnpike road, and we'll see some proof of that shortly. On the eastern side of this road are a series of brand new housing estates. Next up, we've got Aldi. This is built on the site of the former Sissons Transport Depot, which has since relocated to the outskirts of Sherburn. The low wall in front of it still says Sissons Depot on it. All right, next major landmark is a park. It's called Eversley Park, and it, the entrance to it is just opposite this Aldi. There you go. That sign there says Eversley Park on it. We're going to go in, we're going to have a look, and then come back out again, because after that, we're going up into the town centre again. Turning into Eversley Park, we've got a recycling point, which is always good to see. This stands in front of the main Eversley Park, the Eversley Park Centre, a play area and Sherburn's Cricket Club. The Eversley Park Centre has served the community since it was opened in 1995 by the late Squire Bradbury. It's a registered charity and caters for many different activities. You might have guessed it already, but the park is named Eversley because this is close to where the Eversley Garth Mansion was. The housing estate adjoining this sits on the land once occupied by it. The Day family lived at Eversley Garth. William Day owned coal mines in the Barnsley area. He was involved in village life and donated a bell to All Saints Church. Here's the cricket pitch, by the way. Okay, this path took a bit of finding. This leads to Cricketers Lane, which uh, takes us back 
to uh, the main road through Sherman in Elmet, which means we can do the second half, if you like, of the town centre next. Turns out the cricketers way was gated, so I had to go back to the entrance of Eversley Park. I'm glad I did because I passed this, another reference to Sissons on the other side of Aldi. In effect, what we're doing here is coming into the other half of the town centre. I say town, but Sherman and Elmit doesn't have town status. It's a bit of a mystery as to why. Here's some evidence of the former turnpike we talked about earlier. This stone can be found just before the Odd Fellows pub. This one even says where it was made, Liversedge. Now we're into the second part of Sherburn, this time from the south. Here's the Odd Fellows pub. This is locally known as Oddies. I can't think why, to be honest. This part of Sherburn was established as a planned town by the Lords of the Manor in the 13th century in order to raise revenue. In Saxon times, Sherburn centre was closer to the church. Right, in the middle of Sherburn and Elmet here, we've got a board which tells us a lot about uh, the history of the place. I will take some pictures of this. There's uh, a good chance I'll be using a lot of this in the video. You may even have heard some of this already in my voiceover. This town centre is quite large. There's no way I can capture all of it. You've already seen that there. There's a spa shop over there. We've got a Domino's Pizza here. That's the Elmit Social Club. Uh, there's a few other little landmarks here which I will capture in a moment. Um, but basically, after we're done with this section, we're turning right up there to head towards the train station. Okay, I promised you more about the Methodist chapels. Here's the current one on Church View. This was built in 1987 and it's the second one to stand on this site. Its predecessor dated to 1872. Church View has more than one religious building. A couple of doors up is Sherburn's Catholic Church, which is dedicated to St. Joseph the Worker. Around the corner we find Corn Mill Court. This is a reference to a windmill that used to stand on Low Street, which burnt down in 1921. It was one of the last working windmills in the area. Back to Low Street, we've got a small statue with an aeroplane on it. That's the Fairy Swordfish, which was manufactured in Sherburn during World War II. More on that in a bit. I was wondering where I was going to find a parish notice board, and there's one right here. Sherburn and Elmet Community Association. We'll stick a card on the board here. Now I have noticed something on the other side of this, which I think is very interesting. This here, the Sherburn Gala Association, and there's all sorts of events listed on here. But this message here is what caught my eye. They're appealing for volunteers to help these long-running events, uh, to bring these long-running events to the village. To the village they're in danger of stopping if more help is not forthcoming. I think that's important. I think I need to get that message out there. Now we're at Fairways Park, a scaled down version of Eversley Park effectively. There's a road around here called the Fairway. At the back of the park is a large green space. This made a perfect viewing platform for the aeroplane you can hear and might be able to see up above. That will have taken off from Sherburn Aero Club. In some ways, there's nothing quite like the sound of an aircraft engine. And I imagine the people around here are so used to it with Sherburn Aero Club being so close. We'll talk about them in a short while. Moving away from Fairways Park, we have a footpath which leads to Bramley Park Avenue. In the dip to our left is a drain called the Green Dyke. This runs alongside yet more new houses. These form part of those big estates we saw earlier off Low Street. The size of the area they cover is quite astounding. That footpath brings us back to Moor Lane. Note though, not the same Moor Lane as we began at. This is a newer section, part of the B1222, which crosses the railway line on a bridge. 
Now we pass the village sign which you see in this video's thumbnail. This was provided by the Sherbin Gala Association and the community in 2001, presumably for the millennium. Okay, so there are two major things left on the walk. The first of which is a pond which used to belong to the bacon factory. It's called the Bacon Factory Pond. And also, we still need to see Sherbin's railway station, which is our finishing point. The Bacon Factory Pond is just within view to the right of shot. It's a popular spot for anglers, so I'm led to believe. There's the railway line, by the way. Gascoigne Wood Junction is just to the south. If we look the other way, we can see Sherbin's railway station. This is on both the Dern Valley line and the Hull to York line towards Selby. Its two platforms are linked by a pedestrian level crossing. This was formerly used by vehicles because in the days before the newer section of Moor Lane, the road crossed the line here. The station is unmanned and has waiting shelters on each platform, but no other permanent buildings. It should be noted that the station was closed for a number of years. It's been here since 1840, but was closed under the Beeching Acts in 1965. However, in 1983, trains used the line to avoid the Selby Coalfield, and so it was reopened in 1984. I've got to admit, I've never seen a level crossing like that before. Obviously, we're used to these things being for vehicles, for roads, but of course, this is for pedestrians. That's actually really, really cool. Lastly, on the walk back to the car, we pass the Wheat Sheaf pub. One of Sherbin's history pages says this holds a popular steak night on Tuesdays and Thursdays. I might have to try that out. And here we are back at the car some two hours later from when I began this video. We're not finished with Sherbin in Elmit just yet though, not by a long way. We now need to take a drive onto an old RAF base where there's a huge industrial estate and there's a few things of note out there. One of them we've already mentioned, that Sherbin Aero Club. I'll talk a bit about them as we're driving around. So let's get in the car and get on with it. So this drive will take us onto a huge industrial estate to the east of the railway line and to the northwest of the former main runway of the former RAF Sherbin in Elmit. This industrial estate has numerous streets which make reference to the history of the land it stands on. For example, this road is called Aviation Road. When we hit a roundabout in a few moments time, we'll be on Hurricane Way. There's also a Hurricane Close, a Lincoln Way, and a Lancaster Close, and a Lancaster Way. In the 1920s, the Yorkshire Aeroplane Club began operating here. Neville Shute was a member. Long-time viewers will remember him from previous East Riding episodes like Howden. During World War II, the airfield was used as a Royal Air Force station. The airfield also saw the first flight of L.E. Baines' famous prototype glider, the Baines Bat, in July of 1943. As an industrial estate, things are quite different. The most well-known name on the main estate would be Sainsbury's, who have a distribution centre here. Other well-known names here include Eddie Stobart, Legal in General, Wynn Canton, Kern and Nagel, and DHL. When Sisson's Transport relocated, they would end up here too, on the edge of the A162. In 2011, bus manufacturer Optair moved their factory from Crossgates in Leeds to a new purpose-built site on the estate as well. Arguably though, the largest company Sherbin has these days isn't on this estate. That would be British Gypsum, which sits all on its own to the north of the main industrial area. British Gypsum has long been a major employer in Sherbin. Formerly British Plasterboard PLC, they manufacture building materials. The Sherbin site is one of five manufacturing sites in Britain as of 2012. With the camera still on the dash, let's go to Sherbin Aero Club. This is the ideal time to talk a bit more about the fairy swordfish, the statue of which we saw earlier on Low Street. 
It was built by the Blackburn Aircraft Company and it was a biplane torpedo bomber. The aircraft originated in the 1930s and it was nicknamed the String Bag. It was notable for being part of the famous attack on the German battleship, the Bismarck. In fact, the Swordfish sank a greater tonnage of Axis shipping than any other Allied aircraft during World War II. That's a piece of history the village can be proud of alright. Production of the aircraft ended in 1945, but by that time some 1699 units had been built in Sherburn. As for modern aircraft, look no further than Sherburn Aero Club. Opened in 1964, this has established itself as Yorkshire's largest flying club and training school. It's Selby's answer to Gamston. Exiting the Aero Club, on the right as you drive back down New Leniton Lane is a private road and even though I can't drive down it, I do happen to know what's there. So this road is the entrance to the Sherburn Rail Freight Terminal and it's about half a mile away as you can see from this sign and I am led to believe it's quite a busy terminal so lorries probably come in and out of this lane all the time. You can't drive down it anyway because it's a private road but if you do drive down if you have access down there uh, they tell you not to park on the lane because it's so narrow. Obviously I can't do that anyway because I'm not allowed down there. Now the rail freight terminal hasn't always been a rail freight terminal, it used to be something else, something we've mentioned before and that is Gascoigne Wood Colliery. Now because I can't get down there and I can't show you the old colliery, this warrants a special section and here that comes right now. We mentioned it briefly in the Wisto episode, but Gascoigne Wood Colliery was the most important part of the Selby Coalfield. This is where all of its coal was brought to the surface. It was also treated at Gascoigne Wood and distributed onwards by rail. The primary purpose of the super pit was to supply coal to the Air Valley power stations, Drax, Egborough and Ferrybridge. The project was formally inaugurated by the Duchess of Kent in 1976. 4,000 people were employed and extraction began in the early 1980s. As part of the construction process, the NCB paid for the diversion of the East Coast Main Line from Selby. That's the Selby diversion we mentioned earlier in this very video. Most of Gascoigne Wood sits in the parish of South Milford rather than Sherburn, but seeing as the entrance is here, this made more sense. As a rail freight terminal, it covers some 124 acres. Believe it or not, Sherburn and Elmick has two railway stations despite what you might think. The second is South Milford Station which falls within Sherburn's boundaries. You'll find this on the drive out of Sherburn along Low Street. This station is on a different line too, it's on the Selby line which crosses the road on that bridge that you've just seen. The station was opened in 1834 as Milford Railway Station on the Leeds and Selby Railway. The name was changed to South Milford Station in 1867. Some early timetables refer to the station as Milford Bridge. Facilities at the station are limited these days, there are shelters on each platform but there's no footbridge or subway. The station did have buildings and a signal box up until at least 1979. The main building was one of the last remaining examples of original Leeds and Selby Railway architecture. I timed this just right it seems to catch one of the local northern services pulling into the station.
That's one of those strange boundary anomalies, isn't it? That uh, South Milford Station is not actually in South Milford. It's in Sherburn in Elmit, which is crazy, but that's just how it is, I suppose. Okay, that is Sherburn in Elmit complete. And speaking of South Milford, that's where I'm going right now. And in fact, I've already started the walk around South Milford because I didn't think it was really all that beneficial to move the car to my intended starting point, considering that I've literally just parked a few hundred yards away from South Milford Station, which is right on the border. So yeah, let's get going. I'll sign off here for Sherburn and Elmet, and I'll meet you back here next week for South Milford. I've been Andy, also known as the Village Idiot, and I'm out.